Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using direct stiffness matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the frame one time. In this frame, we have the columns AB and CD. Also, we have the beam BC. In the column AB, there is no load. In the column CD, we have uniformly distributed load 6 kN per meter. It is acting towards the left side. In the beam BC, we have a point load 16 kN. The moment of inertia for the columns is 2i and for the beam it is i. Height of the columns is 4 meter and the length of the beam is 5 meter. Now let us find the fixed end moments and reactions. In the column AB there is no load. So the fixed end moments M of AB and M of BA will be 0. Also the horizontal reactions HA and HB will be 0. Now let us find the fixed end moments and reactions in the beam BC. In the beam BC we have a point load 16 kN and it is acting in the center. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. Using the formula we are getting M of BC and M of CB. Let us find the vertical reactions VB and VC. For that we have to divide the point load by 2. When we do that we are getting 8 kN. Now let us find the fixed end moments and reactions in the column CD. In the column CD we have uniformly distributed load 6 kN per meter. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Using the formula we can get M of CD and M of DC. Now let us find the horizontal reactions HC and HD. For that we have to multiply the load 6 with the distance 4 and then divide that by 2. When we do that we are getting 12 kN. Now let us find the kinematic indeterminacy of the frame. In this frame in the joints B and C there will be slope. In the joint B we will have theta B and in the joint C we will have theta C. Additionally there will be sway. We know that in this frame the loading is not symmetrical. Because of this load there will be sway. Since this load acts towards the left side, the sway also will be acting towards the left side. So the kinematic indeterminacy of the frame is 3. They are the slope theta b, slope theta c and the sway delta. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. We know that in the points B and C we have slope. So let us keep the first coordinate in the point B and the second coordinate in the point C. The third coordinate is the sway. Since the sway occurs towards the left side, we have to keep the sway coordinate also towards the left side. We know the formula to find the displacements. Delta matrix is equal to K matrix inverse into P matrix minus PL matrix. Inside the delta matrix, PL matrix and P matrix, there will be three values. Because in this analysis, there are three coordinates. The size of the stiffness matrix will be 3 cross 3. That means inside the matrix, we will have 3 rows and 3 columns. In this formula, first let us find the P matrix. In the P matrix, first let us find P1. For that, we have to check the point B if there is any movement. In the point B, there is no movement, so P1 will be 0. Let us find P2. For that, we have to check the point C if there is any movement. 
in the point c also there is no movement so p2 also will be zero let us find p3 our third coordinate is the sway to find p3 we have to check if there is any horizontal load in the point b and in the point c in both of the points there is no load so p3 will be zero in this formula now let us find the pl matrix first let us find p1l in the point b we have found two fixed end movements m of ba and m of bc we have to add both of them after adding we are getting minus 10 now let us find p2l in the point c we have found two fixed end movements we have to add both of them after adding we are getting two let us find P3L. The third coordinate is the sway. To find P3L, we have to add the horizontal reactions in the points B and C. We know that HB is 0 because there is no load in the column AB. In the point C, we have found the horizontal reaction 12. It is acting towards the right side. But our sway coordinate is acting towards the left side. Since this reaction is acting in the opposite direction of the coordinate, we have to apply Hc as negative. When we add these two values, we are getting minus 12. In this formula, now we are going to find the stiffness matrix. Before that, we have to make the element stiffness matrices. This is the element stiffness matrix. We have to memorize this matrix. Previously, we have seen a non-sway symmetrical frame problem. If we compare that problem with this problem, there will be one change. In that problem, the horizontal reaction Hc was acting towards the right side, but here it is acting towards the left side. Because our sway coordinate is acting towards the left side, so that we have to keep the horizontal reactions in the points B and C towards the left side. For the column AB and the beam BC, there is no change. We have to apply the same matrix. Only for the column CD, we have to make changes. We can see that a little later. First, let us make the element stiffness matrix for the column AB. Length of AB is 4. So, instead of L, let us apply 4 in all of the elements. The moment of inertia for AB is 2I. So, instead of EI, we have to apply 2EI. Then, let us multiply this matrix with 2. When we do that, we will get this matrix. For our own convenience, let us keep EI outside. In the point B, we have the first coordinate. In the coordinate direction, we have the movement MBA. In the matrix, MBA represents the fourth row and the fourth column. So, let us denote the fourth row and the fourth column as 1. Also, in the point B, we have the third coordinate. Here in the coordinate direction, we have the horizontal reaction Hb. In the matrix, Hb represents the third row and the third column. So, let us denote the third row and the third column as 3. Now, let us strike out the unwanted rows and elements. We do not want Ha. So, let us strike out the first row and the first column. We do not want MAB, so let us strike out the second row and the second column. This is K33, this is K31, this is K13, this is K11. Now let us make the element stiffness matrix in the beam BC. Length of BC is 5, so instead of L, let us apply 5 in all of the members. Our first coordinate is in the point B. In the point B, we have the movement MBC. In the matrix, MBC represents the second row and the second column. So, let us denote the second row and the second column as 1. 
our second coordinate is in the point C. In the point C, we have the moment MCB. MCB represents the fourth row and the fourth column. So, let us denote the fourth row and the fourth column as true. Now, let us strike out the unwanted rows and columns. We do not want VB. So, let us strike out the first row and the first column. We do not want VC. So, let us strike out the third row and the third column. This is K11. This is K12. This is K21. This is K22. Now, let us make the element stiffness matrix for the column CD. We know that in the matrix, we have to make some changes. Because the horizontal reaction HC is acting towards the left side. In the matrix, HC represents the first row and the first column. For the first row and the first column, this is the common member. In the column and row, except this member, we have to change the signs. These six members are supposed to be negative. But now they are positive. The moment of inertia for the column CD is 2i. So instead of EI, we have to apply 2EI. And the length of CD is 4. So instead of L, we have to apply 4 in all of the members. In the point C, we have the second coordinate. In the second coordinate direction, we have the moment MCD. In the matrix, MCD represents the second row and the second column. So, let us denote the second row and the second column as 2. Also, in the point C, we have the third coordinate, that is the sway coordinate. Here, in the sway coordinate direction, we have the horizontal reaction HC. In the matrix, HC represents the first row and the first column. So, let us denote the first row and the first column as 3. Now, let us strike out the unwanted rows and columns. We do not want HD. So, let us strike out the third row and the third column. We do not want MDC. So, let us strike out the fourth row and the fourth column. This is K33. This is K32. This is K23. This is K22. We have found the stiffness matrix elements from AB, BC and CD. Now using them, we can make the stiffness matrix. For K33, we have got two values. We have to add both of them. 0 0.375 plus 0 0.375. We will get 0 0.75. For K11, we have got two values. 2 plus 0 0.8, we will get 2.8. For K22 also, we have got two values. We have to add both of them. 0 0.8 plus 2, we will get 2.8. K12 and K21 are 0 0.4. K23 and K32 are 0 0.75. In this formula, we have found everything. Let us apply them. EI inverse is 1 upon EI. We can add these two matrices. After adding, we are getting this matrix. For this matrix, we have to find the inverse. We can apply all of the values in the calculator. If you do not know how to find inverse in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and got the inverse. Now, we can multiply these two matrices. After multiplying, we are getting theta b, theta c and delta. Now, let us find the final moments and reactions in the column a, b. For the column a, b, we have made the element stiffness matrix. Let us apply that. Let us see how to make delta s matrix. For h, b, we have to apply the value of suve. For m, b, a, we have to apply the value of theta b. For the other members, we can apply 0. In this matrix, we have to apply the fixed end movements and reactions, which are 0. After the calculation, we are getting HA, HB and the movements MAB and MBA. 
for HEA we have got a negative value that means it is acting towards the right side. Now let us find the final moments in the beam BC. First let us apply the element stiffness matrix. Let us see how to make delta S matrix. For MBC we have to apply the value of theta B and for MCB we have to apply the value of theta C. For the other terms we can apply 0. Here we have to apply the fixed end movements and reactions. After the calculation we are getting the vertical reactions VB, VC and the movements MBC and MCB. For MBC we have got a negative value. That means it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. Now let us find the final movements and reactions in the column CD. First let us apply the element stiffness matrix. Let us see how to make the displacement matrix. For HC we have to apply the value of delta and for MCD we have to apply the value of theta C. In this matrix we have to apply the fixed end movements and reactions. Finally we are getting the reactions and the movements. For HC we have got a negative value that means it is acting towards the right side. And for MCD we have got a negative value that means it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. In this analysis we have calculated the movements and the reactions. Here you can see the shear force diagram. We can draw the bending moment diagram by superposition method. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.